Live Football Family, welcome in to Huddle It Up Films. Guys and I just sitting here clowning before the show. Should have recorded all that. Should have, I'll, I'll publish that later. Some good stuff going on. But uh, we're here to preview the Ravens, Dolphins, Thursday night football. Everybody's favorite, right? Thursday night. Nice uh, schedule cruncher. Nice little middle of the week break. But the Ravens are heading down to Miami, which is sort of a, a mini hometown for Lamar and Hollywood Brown. Kind of a, a home game on the road. And the Ravens are looking t- to take it to a Dolphins team that's really struggling right now. The Ravens are 6-2. and two. That's in first place by a game in the AFC North. Uh, they trail only the Titans, who have played one more game, and are 7-2 and two for the number one seed in the AFC. So the Ravens are sitting right now at the second seed, looking to capitalize on this Thursday night game, fellas. Because after this, I mean, the Ravens just came off a of bye. It'll be a nice 10-day break. So this could potentially be a uh, a nice spot to rest some veterans. Uh, if the Ravens play well enough, though, they, they kind of have to earn that, though. Jake, how are you feeling about the team right now? Wouldn't it be nice to kind of – Give some guys that some veterans some rest here uh, over this stretch. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of in the same place that we were last week looking at the team. Thankfully, we got another W in the win column, uh, which which is great any week, and I'll take it however we get it. Um, I don't know that they proved a ton of um, a ton of stuff to the rest of the league based on how they played against the Vikings, but. Uh, here we are at six and two. That's it's a really good record, um, and and hopefully we can capitalize on the short week and um, get those South Florida boys some rest on the sideline in the fourth quarter. You know, it'd be great to see Lamar Jackson rock rocking those Oakleys finally with that deal that he has, and um, you know, just having a good time. But th- you are right, a hundred percent. They are going to have to earn that. Uh, you definitely have to earn that. It's not your your home stadium, even though that's where a lot of the guys are from. Uh, so, so we'll see. I, I, I don't have as much concern over the offense as I do the defense, but um, we're going to get into the entire matchup. And uh, I think, I think there's going to be some favorable ones for the Ravens. For sure. Garnett, uh, I wanted to ask you that, you know, the guys I'm talking about, Brandon Williams been banged up, hasn't played. McPhee only played a few snaps. Jimmy Smith only played a few snaps. Yeah. So I'm wondering how we handle them this week, Garnett, because, you know, quite frankly, in this game, we may not need them. Uh, you know, we're getting into the matchups and we give every team their respect here on the show, Garnett. And part of our benefit of really just trying to be honest with the fans is in this matchup, it really should go the Ravens way, uh, you know, but um, it, it's a good chance. I think Garnett is what I'm saying to, to rest guys like Brandon Williams, Jimmy Smith, Pernell McPhee and whoever else is hurting that we're not even really sure about as fans. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, you know, from what I heard or from just Zerber, there's a strong possibility that Chris Westry comes back this week and that really helps out with the rotation at the corner as well. So, and you know, Brandon Williams, we probably gonna, uh, hopefully we'll, we're going to need him down the stretch. Uh, what it seems like Wolf is not maybe he's not gonna be able to come back this week, but you know, just as much rest as possible. But if we can just you know handle our you know our you know handle our situation on the field correctly, maybe we don't have to use those older guys and keep them well rest, like you're saying. I, I'm just hoping, man, in this game, we do what is expected and we do it early. Not not wait to the second half, not wait to the fourth quarter to show something. We come out the gate swinging. You know, we've been having uh, some slow starts here lately, and uh, we, this is a perfect game to uh, fix those mistakes, you know, get everything lined up. So, Garnett, I'm coming right back to you because you said something to me uh, before the show, and, and yesterday, actually, we were talking. You called this a statement game, and yes. when you said that, I gave you the stank eye. Like, this ain't <laughs> no statement game, Garnett. Like, what kind of the only statement we can make is a bad statement. Like, what are you talking about, man? So explain what you mean by this is a statement game for, for the Ravens. So uh, for everybody that's listening, that's what's well going to be watching this. So what I mean by this is a statement game, you know how we have those, uh, those crap games. Well, this is a, this I'll call this is a personal crap game to us. Like, you know, we, we're, as we're about to go, we're about to go over a lot of things that just shows Miami is a a bad team right now, just horrible. 
Like, you know, they're just in a flux with a lot of things from the quarterback all the way down. And the main thing like, I get out of this is this is, should be a blowout. Like, we should, by halftime, this game should already be decided. Now, if that's not, if we don't have this game decided by that time and we're coming out, you know, uh, miscommunication on defense, offenses, the offensive line can't, you know, can't uh, get a push up front against that defense or our defense can't stop, you know, can't stop their run. We got a lot. We already had a lot of questions already, but that's going to create a whirlwind of questions that we, this is going to be uh, just going to basically have us wondering how we're going to look down the road, you know, when we got we got to win those crucial games against Pittsburgh, against Cleveland, against uh, a, you know uh, another game against Cincinnati, and then the Rams later down. So it's one of those things where, like I said, this game is a statement game. It might not look at it when we go over this, but if you think about the situation, it means a lot. All right, so Jake, I'm coming to you on this one because you know I'm more of the uh, it's a week to week league guy and we could go in here and win by three points and it's a win. And, you know, like, I feel like, you know, my, my counter to Garnett is I feel like we already know what our problems are on this team. They're pretty much front and center. It's big plays on defense. It's slow starts on offense. It's the offensive line, yada, 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 you know, like we're fixing some, some of the issues, but like our issues are on front street. So yeah. I mean, what do you, what do you think about what Garnett said? What I said, give me the, give me the, give me the man in the middle view. You're over there in the middle. So, <laughs> Uh, man, I'm I'm kind Team of purple. yeah. I I am kind of in in between uh, <laughs> both of you guys there. Um, maybe a little bit more like your perspective. Um, just with that counter argument of what Garnett said. Um, this is such a week to week league. Any team can win at any time. And while Miami looks really bad on paper, I mean the numbers tell you what you need to know. Uh, it's, it's still a, a tough thing to, to play on a short week and have to travel. And I could see the game being closer than, you know, us blowing them out in the first half. Um, and if the Ravens can get the win on Thursday night and then they get some time to rest, I'm good with it. However it happens. So that's kind of where I am with it. Uh, our, our problems will not all be fixed this week. Um, I, I could very easily see an outcome similar to the Chargers game where the Ravens did dominate um, and the score showed that. But, um, I mean, we, we've actually probably seen more of the, the games that are nail biters that go to overtime. We've had three overtime games. I don't think this is going to be overtime. But uh, right now the Ravens are not pulling away from teams that I think they could. Um so I, I'm not going to predict it. Uh, I, I just hope that they can get the win on Thursday and get some rest and really evaluate how to overcome some of these deficiencies and mask them um, in whatever way possible. Yeah, well said. I love I love both sides of that. So that was great, man. Like, yeah, it, like what better game, though, seriously, to have a Thursday night road game than against a team like this? You know how hard it is to get ready on a Thursday night and to go down and to play, and especially coming off an overtime game and the emotional drain of this season. Like, this is kind of like I, I wouldn't want to play Cleveland or Pittsburgh on this week, you know, in this week in Cleveland or in Pittsburgh. That would be a, a really, really, really tough, uh, tough game. So let's get into the matchups like we always do. Uh, people, people love this part of the show, by the way, fellas. So. Pretty excited. Are we getting this? Is we're starting with Garnett here, huh? All right. Well, you, you just saw the hand signals there. <laughs> it's it's the Ravens with the ball, Garnett, and we're talking about this offensive line of the Ravens, much maligned, but we're looking at a defensive front now. Most of the talent on this Miami team is on defense. Defensive front has some names that some draft buffs might remember. Uh, Jalen Phillips, one of my favorite. He actually was my highest rated defensive player next to Sertain last year was really high on Jalen Phillips. He's working in the league. Christian Wilkins, uh, high pick from a few years, a couple years ago. Raekwon Davis, I thought would have been a good fit for this uh, defense. Really tall guy. Uh, you have Emmanuel Ogba, who well, Ravens fans should be familiar with him. And then Ozzie Newsom's last pick, Zach Seiler, 
Um, former Raven was drafted in 2018. Like I said, Ozzy's last pick is hanging on there. So Ravens offensive line versus a talented young Miami defensive front. Uh, handicap this matchup in the trenches for me, Garnett. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, whew, it's actually a little. This is where it gets a little interesting on the line. Uh, Emmanuel Agba, he's been a a a solid performer for Miami. Uh, he leads the team with a two point, I think two point, yeah, two and a half sacks right now uh, down there in the trenches. But just across the board, they're they're fast from sideline, strong, fast, strong guys from sideline to sideline, and uh, they they're tough. Like they don't, that's the one thing about the defense. Like that's literally the only thing that really sticks out on Miami when it comes to their, uh, their team as a whole, just their defense, yeah, especially in down in the trenches. But uh, Zach Siler is a nice rotational piece down there along with uh, Christian Wilkins. They cause havoc. Christian Wilkins is one, a, a very, I'll say in my opinion, a very underrated guy plays, plays good as a three technique as well. And uh, if I want to like pick a weakness that I want to go at, to be honest with you, I'll, I'll just probably go out there. To be honest with you, uh, the rookie, I'll probably go out there with Jalen Whip Phillips and, and test him out on the on the RPOs and just see what you can get from him. That's that's just me on that. But so, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, it's a, I wanted to interject, Jake. It, it's a different speed. You see these new defensive ends and uh, Lamar's record against NFC teams and uh, Lamar's record against teams the first time he plays them, like. Yeah, you know, people say, "Oh, well, once you see them once, it's a lot easier." And uh, you know, we take offense to that as Ravens fans, but there is some truth to that. The first time you see Lamar, has got to be a different speed, man. Like you ever play a game with somebody once, you know, you, you, I don't, you know, and the first time you see him, you're like, "Whoa, what the?" You know, I got to adjust everything I'm doing just to catch up to that <laughs> speed. But uh, yeah, but yeah, Jake, uh, Ravens offensive line versus Miami defensive line, Jake. Sorry about yeah. that. Oh, uh, no, you're good. So I mean, Garnett kind of already hit on the Miami guys. Um, you know, all, all of the guys mentioned are, are pretty high on snap counts for them. So, so they're using them a good bit. Adam Butler is one of those as well. Um, just gets plenty of snaps on that, along that defensive line at the end position. Uh, Ogba is certainly one of their top performers. And then, uh, probably Qu Christian Wilkins and Zach Seiler are the other guys that are just, um, the the beef in the trenches and, and Jalen Phillips I think is going to be a really good player in the league but because he is a rookie right now I agree with you Garnett um it's it's probably one of the weaker points on the line to attack um whether that is making him think too much or um coming at him with uh hopefully we get Nick Boyle back this this week um and really uh, sealing that edge um, that he's going to be playing on. So uh, it it's a decent defensive line. Uh, Miami has not been great statistically, but uh, they have some talent. So for the Ravens, they're really going to have to play their, their best um, with the guys they have available. Ben Cleveland should be practicing again soon i think this week but i i don't think he'll be um he'll be ready to go for a week or two and then um we have phillips we have uh av and uh obviously bozeman and, and all of that so it yeah the, the line the line hasn't really changed we're not going to have mccary back which is disappointing but um we'll we'll see how, how we can match up against those guys what do you think about that jason yeah, I, I was going to mention Cedric Obwehi too. Uh, you know, he's new to yeah. the roster. He he on, may yeah. yeah, he may play Jake, but I, I would figure that they, you know, if I'm them, if I'm the Ravens, I'm saying maybe we just give him another 10 days before we give him a shot because Tyree was struggling with some things in there uh in, in, in that game against the Vikings, some some really poor snaps and uh you know, I I, I would still say in this particular game maybe they stick with Tyree for one more week. But I wanted to ask you guys uh, something that I was talking with Alec last night with, and I put on Twitter, so, and I tagged you, so I'm sure you guys saw it, even though you didn't, you know, comment and, like, pump up the tweet or not, and, like, ain't like you're on the show with me. Yeah, you know, don't guard it. See, you know, he, he probably liked it or something. But, yeah, we were talking about Patrick McCary, and I wanted to get my like, guys, you don't have to, like, go into a long detail on this, but, you know, Alec and I were really surprised at Jeff Zrebeck, you know, saying, hey, McCary looks good. 
And then on the injury report, he wasn't declared out. I figured McCary would be out for a while. McCary was doubtful. Again, this week he's listed as, as doubtful. So I would wanted to know when Patrick McCary comes back, considering the struggles that Villanueva has had, do you just put McCary back at his right tackle spot where he played so, so well, or do you take a shot, maybe put him over, uh, sit in Villanueva down, because Villanueva looked bad at right tackle too. Go with your Abuehi or your Phillips at right tackle, but put McCary in uh, Lamar's blind side. Outside idea, don't want to spend too much time on it, guys, but I, I kind of wanted to get your opinion since it was my like uh, crazy idea of the week. Go ahead, Garnett. You can go first. Ooh. I would say I'm 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 all about continuity and uh just not messing up uh a nice I guess the feng shui of business as say. I, I just I, <laughs> I know right. So I would definitely not I, I wouldn't I wouldn't chance it. Like it, there's already a uh, a chemistry that's already somewhat built and we already went through the uh through the through the you know all the nasty business at the beginning of the season trying to figure out a, ro- a decent rotation and game chemistry. If it was at the beginning of the season, I say, yeah, we'll go for it. But at the same time, I really just keep McCarty there, man. If he's fully healthy and back comes back, you know, I'm not saying he can come back 100%. No one's going to come back 100%. But if he come back and be able to hold down the four, man, I'll keep him at right. But until then, I I, I would just say Phillips. I know I know we're still talking about the McCarty part, but Phillips, I'll take a, I'll try to avoid he over Phillips any time of the day. It's like night and day when it comes to f- foot speed and just being able to move with quick feet. I'll take a boy here, but uh, from the Macari answer, I'll definitely I'll keep him at right tackle. That that's just me. Yeah, I side with you on this as well, Garnett. Um, you know, he's he's played so well at right tackle, so I I don't really like the idea of of trying to move him mid season. I could see them trying it in practice with the 10 day um, window. So uh, just, just like uh, you guys, I don't expect McCary to play this week, um, but perhaps this upcoming week after, um, which would, which would be really nice. It'd be so uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we shall see on that, but personally the, the, the chemistry matters a ton and uh, with him already playing well at at right tackle, I uh, I don't know. Uh, oh boy, he would would really have to come in and you know take take control of that right tackle job for me to consider McCary at the left tackle over Av. Okay, well that that's why you guys were quiet because you, you you didn't want to pile on your boy who was getting it on Twitter. So I respect that, I respect that, but you know. So, hey, let's get into the Ravens' rushing offense against the Miami rush defense. Uh, Some of the numbers on this Miami team is pretty decent considering how bad their offense has. So when I talk about the Miami defense, these numbers uh, could be a little deceiving. Now, the Ravens' rush offense, uh, they are averaging five yards per carry, which is third in the NFL. The Miami rush defense is giving up 4.3 yards per carry. That's middle of the pack, 15th in the league. The Ravens were able to run the ball against the Vikings, just like they did against the Chargers. It seems like if we come up against a team that's poor against the run, we can still run the ball, but we're having trouble against some of these better run defenses. So here we go. Jake, I believe you're starting this one. The Ravens rushing offense versus the Miami rush defense. Yes. So what Miami's kind of middle of the pack uh, in rush defense right now. I I believe things are trending in the correct direction. Um, I think because of this mirroring, uh, my hands were actually going the wrong way. But um, it looks like the the veteran backs that the Ravens have are are figuring out what it's like to run in this scheme. Um, Bell is looking better. Freeman is still looking really strong, um, building upon what he already has has shown to this point. So, I mean, those two are kind of the guys right now. Uh, and then, of course, Lamar is – he's the engine that, that moves this whole thing. So, I, I think they're going to be able to run the ball a little bit against Miami, especially because 
uh, the passing game has been so strong for the Ravens as well. And getting a guy back uh, like Sammy Watkins does nothing but help. Uh, Devin Duvernay's balling out. James Prochet hasn't had a ton of opportunities, but, you know, he's played well this year. And then, of course, uh, Hollywood Brown is, you know, truly being a wide receiver one in this offense. And Rashad Bateman is 100% the guy that I said that he could be coming out of college as a chain mover. I was like, you get him in this offense, and he is another option besides Mark Andrews that can move the chains. And what has he done? Uh, I, I believe he's converted 12 or 13 first downs so far in his career, and he and he missed um, he missed a, a number of games to start the year, at least three, uh, yeah, maybe, he, maybe four. He, he was uh, he was 10 for 10. I remember them saying that on TV. He was 10 for his first end catches all went for first down. But Garnett, let's get back to the running game for a second. How do you expect us to be able to run the ball? Jake mentioned that you know our, our pass game is really hoping helping to open things up here. Yeah, so I call it a modified run game. What well, well, for us, I was just uh, how can I put this without sounding crazy? So it just basically, you, you use our uh, backs a little bit more in the in the short pass game to create, or I say do a couple screens or receivers or whatever, but just a cool, couple quick passes just to loosen up, get them going sideline to sideline, and then what the one thing that I saw from Bell this past week or this uh, this past Sunday is. Instead of him going horizontal, he went vertical, like north and south running, which held out the lot going through the A gap and the B gaps. And just basically uh, just nice zone block schemes that helped out, to be honest with you. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't believe it. Wow, Freeman. Freeman, he was able to uh, make a guy miss when he had those one-on-one opportunities. The, I, I would say Zeitler and uh, what's his name? Darn it. I'm, I'm just – all over the place right now. Talk about Bozeman in the middle. But, yes, those two have done a hellacious job moving people out the way on nice little combo blocks here and there. And yes. Freeman, Freeman has been doing a good job being very decisive with the running. Like he's not, he's not, you know, being hesitant whatsoever. And I think that's what we do. We just need to let, just keep on doing what we're doing, creating holes and basically, basically hit them while we can in those, you know, early in the game. Now, Garnett, when you were talking about statement game, like the, for me, the run game, this is where I want to see, you know, a litmus test. Because I mentioned we run up against bad running teams. We're running the ball fine, more than fine. We come up with good running against good running defenses, and it's all Lamar. So this is what I want to see. I want to see us be able to run the ball. And Devontae Freeman got some fist pumps from me uh, from the couch uh, on Sunday because he was actually getting over what the play was expected to get. He's like shifty and then north-south. And then Garnett, just going back to your point with the uh, combo blocks between Bozeman and Zeitler and them just double-teaming a nose tackle, moving them out of the way. That's what I'm looking for for Jake's guy, Ben Cleveland, to come back. Uh, we can do the same thing on the other side with uh, with big the bigger Ben, Ben Cleveland. So, uh, so yeah, some, some upside still to this run game, but I would love to see us average. Uh, what are we averaging? Five yards per carry. If we can average five yards per carry in this game without Lamar, uh, just the backs, that would be a great sign for me um, to put this game away like we know we can. If I, if if my if our running backs are not in the double digits of carries, we have a problem, in my opinion. Yeah, Tyson Williams, by the way, had 18 snaps, I believe, same as Le'Veon Bell, but didn't have a touch. He actually had one carry that was called back on a penalty. Um, but yeah, it was uh, Tyson was just there pretty much as, as a decoy on early downs to give the vets a, a rest. Looks like it's Devontae Freeman's backfield with Le'Veon Bell coming in to spell him. So in the pass game, man, this is where it gets really exciting for the Ravens. The Ravens pass offense, 8.1 yards per attempt. That is seventh in the league. This Miami pass defense is 19th in the league in yards per attempt, 7.4 yards per attempt. Now, Miami has some talent in their defensive secondary. This is the strength of the team, and this is the reason why I thought the Dolphins would be at least around a 500 team, even if Tua didn't progress uh, in, you know, as a quarterback. I'm like, man, this defense has some really talented pieces. Of course, Xavier Howard, Byron Jones. Uh, you have the, the rookie, Javon Holland, uh, who played well. I think he was a second or a third round pick for them. Had him pretty decent, uh, decently high on my board, uh, too. I think he was my second or third ranked safety. Brandon Jones, just some nice players um, on their, in their secondary. 
but they're running up against a Ravens receiving core that Jake outlined with so much talent. So what are we looking for in this passing game? How do we get it humming? Who do you think will have a big game? Whatever you got on the passing game. Garnett, you want to go ahead and start us with this one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can start you with that. Yeah, there's a nice tandem between uh, about Byron Jones and uh, Xavier, uh, Xavier Howard. Like we're talking about the should have been Raven Xavier Howard, but we're not going to get into that. But anyway, but, but between them two, they're they're pretty good. They're always going to have over 100% snaps. They're always they're always going to be on the field as usual, and then they have a nice little rotation in the slot as well. Uh, and then they got a, it, it, I can't even say his name, it, but uh, it, 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 not, it, but Nagani, uh, I think I said Noah, that. yeah, Noah, no, no, right. Noah, Noah, let's go. He's he, he's he's come around when he got this opportunity as well. But uh, Javon Holler and Brandon Jones, man, they're super versatile, like it really keeps you know offensive guess guessing. And it, and, and one thing about uh, the the Dolphins, they like to blitz off. They do a lot of New England blitzes, so or we do the same thing where we disguise, have everybody to the line, last second, bail out. You don't know who's coming or who's going. That's what they, they do very well with their secondary. Um, yeah, yeah. And Javon Holly, man, he you know he uh, had a, a pick last game against Houston, and whatever you want to make out of that, but he he that just shows that he can find the ball. So it, it's gonna be. Going against our receivers, though, like I think this would be a great game for a Devin Duvernay or let's just say we put Hollywood in the slot or whoever's going to be in the slot is going to be feasting along with uh, Mark Andrews, I believe. I think we 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 can burn them in the slot. You know, coming, you know, we can split those safeties up, make those young guys think about life decisions. I should say. Life decisions, yeah. I mean, you know, with 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 Howard and uh, Brandon Jones, you know. Uh, as whoever the third corner me Nick Needham or whoever it's going to be, mm-hmm. he's not as talented as, uh, as those other two guys, Jake. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, those guys are, are some alphas. They really kind of have two of them, um, on the outside, but yeah, in the slot, it looks like it's, it's Nick Needham. Uh, they, they have Eric Rowe with safety, but you know, he can kind of move around as well. And then you already mentioned Javon Holland who, Really, he's kind of a versatile player that could play some slot if they wanted him to, and Brandon Jones as well. So it's a talent in secondary, but the Ravens wide receivers, oddly enough, are a group that perhaps um, have a little bit more than than what Miami's secondary even has. And I like Garnett's point about Mark Andrews. Um, You know, their linebackers, Jerome Baker, he's been banged up, I believe, but he's been playing through Mm it. Uh, Andrew Van Ginkle. I mean, Mark Andrews is going to match up with anybody. It's be interesting to see whether those linebackers take them a lot or whether they zone, uh, plays a lot of zone, or if, you know, they play a third safety because, you know, we mentioned they have a lot of depth there. And uh, going back to, to, to Garnett's point, Brian Flores, their head coach, came from New England. So, yeah, we, we see a lot of those off blitzes and a, a lot of Ravens-type stuff in there with the 3-4, the pre-snap disguises. So, you know, I, I, I want to give credit to the Miami defense. I mean, we're about to trash them when we go to the offensive side, I have a feeling. But uh, for them to be ranked the middle of the pack with as little as they're getting for the offense really speaks to Miami. And like I said, for me, I would like to see the running game get going. And uh, I have no doubt that we're going to find some spots and make some plays on this team, uh, especially, you know, this is like one of those things that, uh, you know, fans might not understand, but my uh, Lamar – in Hollywood, these Miami guys, you know, Clayus Campbell on the defensive side, uh, it's always been a strong connection, but uh, there's something about playing in your hometown, little homecoming for Lamar. I expect a lot of Ravens fans are going to be making the trip down to nice, warm South Florida. I imagine a lot of Dolphins fans are checking out with their team looking like this. So, like, it's from an offensive perspective, I don't expect, like, a loud, hype crowd that they're going against. It's going to be kind of like a more comfortable feeling than most road games. And I, I actually think that that's an understatement. I think I'm like uh, tippy toeing around how I really feel. But uh, but yeah, final thoughts on the offense and and how we should attack them, Jake. What are you thinking here? Balanced attack. Hey, we talked about that short passing game so much. I know people are sick of hearing it, but we when we went to it last week, that's when things really opened up for us. Yeah, yeah, you were spot on with that. Um, we all wanted to see it for sure. And I think we'll see some more of it that 
that up-tempo offense, two-minute drill has seemed to be just a spark that the offense um, has used from time to time. And whenever they, they go to it, they're moving the ball. And, and they continue to move the ball unless there is some disastrous turnover or penalty that, that really sets them back. So, I mean, I, ho- I hope to see more of that. I really do expect the run game to get going a little bit in this one. And um, it, it'll be interesting to see if if Mark Andrews is is a full go. I, I don't think he's on the injury report. but Yeah, his thumb. His thumb he, look, he got banged up, and you can see him moving his yeah, thumb. Yeah. He got banged up in the game a little bit, which is why I, I even mentioned him uh, with Good the call. short – Yeah, with the short week, I was – I was thinking, you know, this could be a big week for Mark Andrews, but with him being hurt, he might be used a little bit less, and we have Nick Boyle coming back, I think. So uh, it, it'll be really cool to see what, what they can do with the wide receivers and hopefully with the tight ends and, of course, um, on the ground, on the ground for sure. So good night. are we going to start this game like 2019 and just uh... – you know, open it up and throw a bomb to Hollywood on the first uh, on the first play, or are we going to how are we going to attack this Dolphins uh, defense? All right, so the 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 purple the purple guy inside me says hell yes, but a real realization knowing that they're going to play two two over the top, we're just probably going to dig and dump their butts like just at the beginning just to get a good feel of you know, to get a good feel for them. But yeah, I, I hope I hope we uh, come out there and we put up we put it on them, but. I think it's going to be one of those games like how we play Minnesota, but it it could be either or. To be honest with you, if they want to come out and try to take away our deep ball, we just you know cut them with a th- you know I guess cut them with a thousand cuts. I don't know if I said that right or what. Death death by a thousand cuts. Yes, that that yeah, or do that, or you know just you know if they want to give us a free shot over the top, we'll take it. But I think you know Miami's going to choose the way choose how they want to die. Or how high, high it's going to happen, man. That's how I, that's how I look at it. That's the way. That's the way it's <sighs> happened with most teams. It take yeah. the Ravens a while to adjust, but once they find out how you're playing them, and uh, you know, uh, like Alec Alec uh, said last night, like Greg Roman says, well, every time we see a defense, uh, they're playing something completely different to stop Lamar. And Alec was like, well, prepare for how that they have played your the past opponents have played you instead of how this up- upcoming opponent has played their past games, if that makes sense. He's like, we, uh, how many times are we going to bang our heads against the wall and be surprised that a team comes out with something we haven't seen before? Let's uh, let's prepare for the expe- – uh, expect the unexpected. There's another phrase for you, Garnett, old man phrase, bust out on you. So flipping it over to the Ravens' defensive side versus this Miami offense, no way to sugarcoat it. This Miami de- uh, offense – has played poorly. We don't know who their quarterback is going to be, although their coach said again today that if they played tonight, Jacoby Brissett would be starting for them because Tua uh, has a uh, broken or a, you know some kind of uh, fracture in his middle finger, his throwing hand, so it's hard for him to grip and get any strength in there. But uh, I was a little surprised that the head coach would say, hey, if we had a game today, it's like the game's two days from now. Don't give any – why are you giving out information? So it could be Jacoby Brissett. Uh, this Dolphins offense is struggling. So uh, let's talk about that offensive line of the Dolphins, which has some pretty shocking numbers uh, as far as pressures allowed. I believe, Garnett, this is this is you. Do you have all the stats for that, Garnett? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I do. So I'll start off with the, the center, center Greg uh, Manx. I think I said his last name right. I'm sorry, Big Dolph, you heard me. Uh, with uh, with Miss Thursday game with the ankle injury, Austin Ryder, the dude that used to play for the Kansas City, right. uh, yep, will remain the starter center. Uh, Michael Dieters still sideline with a foot injury. Uh, Manx played the last nine snaps Sunday before departing. All right, you got to, got to, got to get through that. Uh, they're also talking about giving uh, left tackle Greg Little. I don't know if you guys are familiar, remember that name, but they might might give him some play time. But Miami has allowed 23 sacks in the last nine games. Also, they're ranked dead last in the run blocking and 30th in pass blocking on PFF. Now, here's a, a good friend of mine that's to the far right, on the, I mean the far left on the screen, told me this, which had me mind blown. But 234 pressures was dead last, and in the, in the closest person is what 180. Yeah, I think it was 187 by Carolina. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
So basically, you know, they've given up 50 more pressures in nine weeks than the next closest team. Uh, they have some rookie uh, or some, they have rookie Liam Meikenberg is playing left tackle. Austin Jackson has already been moved from left tackle to left guard early in his career. They have Robert Hunt, who was a decent player. He's playing right guard and Jesse Davis. Don't know much about Jesse Davis, to be quite honest with you, which is rare for me. But they have a, a you know a mix of like younger players, and uh, it just have been have just had a hard time doing anything. And and when you look at the the talent that they have uh, elsewhere, I mean they do have some receivers, some tight ends. Their backs aren't terrible. Um, you know you figure if they got anything out of their offensive line, these other numbers that we'll get to will be a little bit poor, a little bit better. But Jake, man, speak to the uh, the advantage the Ravens could have here, and uh, you know, have you have you seen a, a number like that? What was it, two hundred and thirty four pressures allowed, and the next team was one hundred and eighty something at Carolina? Yeah, it's that's a lot. It's it's a whole a whole freaking heap. Yes, uh, <laughs> it, it's one of those games that uh, going into this week, you know, who's licking his chops. It's, it's Wink Martindale and it's Justin Houston. I, I still think he's a half sack away from his hundred. Uh, we haven't celebrated that hundred sacks yet. Um, so, man, I, there's definitely going to be pressures in this game. I can guarantee that. Um, the, the thing I would like to see uh, some more of, though, are, are getting all the way home, creating those sacks um, and forcing turnovers. Um, Aaron throws for interceptions, force fumbles, you name it. Um, and, and I think against an offensive line like this, the Ravens have a really good shot. And um, I, I, I think it could come from a lot of different guys. Matt Ibike, uh, he needs to be on his A game. I think he, he made some steps in the right direction last week. Um, Adafe Owe, Justin Houston. Purnell didn't play a ton last week, but, you know, this this line that that has has some question marks is going to be put to the test and i'm looking forward to that battle 100 and i think this one favors the ravens much more than the other trench battle um uh for baltimore versus miami that that's a little bit more even um our offensive line versus their their defensive line i, I think our defensive line is stronger than their o-line currently yeah and this is a game where if if we get a lot of pressure up front and everything i can't celebrate i'm not going to get too high uh if that happens because miami has played so poorly on their offensive line but i do will say that this is a really good chance on defense for guys like matt bk to really continue his momentum that he started last week against minnesota it's a good chance for adafi away to reassert himself as a player in this defense, you know, I was, I was, I don't want to say disappointed in him, but I thought he would have a big game against Minnesota and Adafi was not in the stat sheet, not one tackle, not one assist, batted down pass. It wasn't, it wasn't anything for Adafi. Uh, Justin Houston, it'll be nice to get that monkey off his back, get that hundred sack. Uh, Calais Campbell still looking for his first sack. It would just be nice to, and, and, and some other players there too, like maybe a Brandon Williams comes back and we get him some snaps, uh, uh, you know, against you know, what is Austin Reader from KC, get him going. Uh, so this is a good chance where I'm not going to, you know, if we're all of a sudden have an eight sack game or, you know, battering the quarterback around, I'm not going to say, yes, we're back. We're pressuring the quarterback, but it is a really good opportunity for us to get in the groove. When, when you, who are you looking for on this defensive line to step up Garnett? Like, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm looking for – I, I don't know who. Hopefully, it might be Jelly Ellis that might be playing those tackle or I don't know. God knows who. I know Roger Washington is a three technique, but I would love for him to get more snaps and, you know, replace Jelly on some, some snaps. But I'm I'm really looking for uh, Matt Abuke to step up, as, as you just mentioned, big time, to just stay consistent, keep on doing what he's doing. Adafi Oway – you know, to keep on working, trying to get around the edge. But to be honest with you, to be honest with you, I'm really just going to stay in the middle and say Matt Abuke and whoever's going to be in that interior presence. I know Clayus Campbell does his part, but, you know, for us to help out our defensive ends or our pass rushers come off the edge, it's, I think what they, it gets alleviated 
that they'll beat a man because the quarterback can step into the pocket. So we need that interior push like we've been talking about all season. And like I said, Matt Abuke and whoever's going to be in that middle along aside with them, that's who I'm looking for. Somebody to step up in that uh, in the interior in the trenches, and I think we'll do very well. So, Jake, is there a thing, a, a such thing as momentum here as far as like, hey, we can get on a roll in the defensive line here and carry that into a – and carry that in the next week, like guys like Adafi away learning something about themselves uh, or Meta BK, or is this just a week to week type thing? How are you feeling about that? Um, that's a good philosophical question. Um, I thanks. I try. I try. Yeah, yeah. I, I would generally say that football in general, football is a week to week sport. Uh, however, confidence can build. And there can be a growing momentum and confidence and swagger that develops because of performance um, and preparation and the players being able to um, go from uh, watching tape, putting something together, um, game plan wise, executing it and it, you know, it working out and providing, um, stats and good results can definitely carry over carry over to another week so um kind kind of both it's it's not an easy um straight up answer but uh i i would say there could be momentum that they could build however like you mentioned earlier um this offensive line is is not going to be their toughest test yeah i'll have to get you to write an essay on that later jake to get you know the detailed answer with the, uh, you know, the opening and, the, you know, your lead and everything. But, uh, yeah, just a philosophical question I had. So let's see how this affects – this offensive line has affected their running game. Now, the Dolphins last week, Miles Gaskin is their lead back. 20 carries for a total of 34 yards against the 85 Bears. No, against the Houston Texans. <laughs> so this Miami rush offense is averaging three and a half yards per carry. That is 30th in the league. The Ravens rush D, 15th in the league at 4.3 yards per carry. And, you know, the thing that strikes me about this Ravens rush defense is there's a big play here, there's a big play there. But from down to down, just like the past game, they seem pretty consistent. So let's go to uh, let's go to Jake first on this one. The Ravens rush or the, the Dolphins rush offense versus the Ravens rush defense. Uh, how do you see this one playing out? Yeah, they're – the rushing offense in Miami is not a huge threat. Uh, at any time, there there could be a big play. I, I do think Gaskins has a nice skill set. Um, he's not bad as a runner, and I think he has some solid hands. Um, he's kind of an all around back. But what they have done in the ground in the run game just doesn't impress me. And in reality, the the Ravens' defense has held up a lot better than um, what their ranking would suggest. Garnett, handicap this one for me. Is Miami going to be able to get anything going against the, the run, against the Ravens' defense that might be missing Big Brandon again and uh, has had some struggles against the run, although it's been it's had some successes as well? Uh, 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 this is going to be shocking to a lot of people because I get told I'm a sour patch person. I'm very hard on the Ravens, but I don't see hell. No, I don't think Miami's going to get that to start against us. Uh, I just, I don't like. It's it's one of the things where we take pride, even even that my even when we play Minnesota. Other than that big run that we broke off to the right that uh, Avery lost containment on. And what, which I would say he allowed, but he just lost containment on the edge. Other than that, you really didn't see that many big runners against us in that Minnesota game, I would say. But when it comes to this one, I don't think we're going to be, we're going to allow it. I think we're going to play, I think in this game, this game is one of the ones where communication is key to execution and success for us. And that's the one thing that I think we're going to sharpen up on against Miami. And I think we're going to give them. It's gonna be it's gonna be one of those old school 2007. We're not gonna allow you to get a hundred yards type of running game, and I think that's what's gonna happen. Their their line can, I, if you compare our guys one on one against their guys, you're gonna say all of our guys will win those one on ones, and I just don't see that happening. Uh, Queen has been looking phenomenal at the wheel, along with, with Bonds in the middle, which has been lights out ever since. So I just I I just really have to see a hard time them 
doing having you know really good success unless they just catch us on a weird trick play or something but i don't i don't i don't see that and then the craziest thing about it they do so much of their run game is so lackluster and they live and die for play action which we're going to get in the passing game next it's just I, it's going to be an ugly day man the more tough you sell yeah, yeah tough to sell the play action definitely and Seriously. um you know it, it, i'm glad you mentioned the communication because i just did a cut up of josh Bynes in his game against minnesota and I'm about to do a cut up about of Patrick Queen in his last two games. And you can see the communication between those two. And uh, it's really helped Queen a lot. And, uh, you know, just from a fan standpoint, it really encouraged me. You can see on the coach's tape a little bit different than you can on the TV copy. Patrick Queen is seems genuinely happy for Josh Bynes when he makes a play. And that energy is back because Patrick Queen is, does not look like a selfish player. He's happy when the defense makes a stop. So him being in a better position, even though he got kind of replaced by Bynes on some, you know, some situations, he's happy for Bynes. When Queen's uh, happy, the defense itself is more energetic. So just from a not an X's and O's standpoint, but from an energy standpoint and a tangible standpoint, I really like to see that. So, so yes, look forward to the Patrick Queen cut-ups coming up. You guys will enjoy that. But the run defense, the communication, them being in their gaps has, has gotten so much better with Josh Bynes in there. And it, it looks like it's pumped Patrick Queen up a little bit, which is just great to see. So the yeah. Miami, the Miami pass uh, offense, the numbers on that aren't uh, much better. Um, they are 32nd dead last. They're only averaging 6.0 yards per pass. Now the Ravens, of course, uh, on their offensive side are up in the eight, 8.1. So you can tell by that number, just how low, Miami's uh, passing game is 6.0 yards per, per pass. I mean, the Ravens are almost rushing the ball for as much as Miami's passing the ball. And then the Ravens pass defense is still struggling bottom of the league at 25th, uh, allowing 8.0 yards per pass. So Miami has some weapons on this side. Uh, can you just go ahead and talk about the weapons that they have? And can Miami connect on some big plays in this game? Yeah, so – uh, Will Fuller is not going to be playing. Uh, he still has a finger injury. Um, Preston Williams will play. Uh, he he did not play last week against Houston, and now we're getting to the stronger players for them. Jalen Waddell uh, was a guy I loved coming out of Alabama, uh, one of the top wide receivers in the draft, and he has been really, really special for Miami. The problem is the quarterback position, the offensive line, and pretty much everything else around him. Uh, so he is great. He gets a ton of targets per game. So expect that. Uh, regardless of who's covering on covering him, he is going to be thrown the ball. So uh, wh whether that means maybe we can bait something and, and take an interception to the house, that'd be awesome. But uh, you can be sure that Wada will be targeted. Uh, he, he catches the ball from various positions. He moves around the field. He's not just a slot guy. Um, he's not just outside. He clearly moves around and catches targets, um, you know, really close to the line of scrimmage, and he can also uh, catch them deep. So he is one of their key weapons. Devontae Parker, uh, I think, just went on IR. Um, yep. So they will not have him either. And then Mike Isecki, uh Last five games, seven seven catches for 85 yards, a touchdown, eight catches, 115 yards, four for 43, five for 57, one touchdown, and 10 for 86. So needless to say, he's been active and a key part of their offense. So really, lock up Waddle, lock up Gusecki, and the game's over. Um, that, that's kind of how I see it with their passing game, so. Yeah, Garnett. I was yeah. I was going to say, uh, uh, throwing it to Garnett. All those things that people tried to say about Lamar. That's kind of how I see Tua, uh, and Tua may not play in this game. It may be Jacoby Brissett, who I, you know, honestly, I'd rather see Tua in this game, just to you know, from a Ravens perspective, to give him the young player some looks. I mean, Jacoby Brissett has been around. He's 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 seen it all. Um, but yeah, they love the middle of the field, Garnett. They love targeting Waddle. They love targeting targeting Gesicki. Um, you know, not much on the outside, especially without Devontae Parker and Will Fuller. Yeah, so 
I know what you meant by you want to take advantage of uh, Young too. I I, I, yes. I see it, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, when it comes to Jasicki though, the one thing about them how they use them, they like to put them in the isolated like isolation routes. Like they'll put him literally by himself and let him do his work. You know, one hand this way, one hand that way. Like literally, he's he's becoming a, like one of the, the premier tight ends. Like you know, just not really getting talked about as much as I thought he would, but it's happening now. But uh. You know, also in the red zone area, they do try to depend on Mac Hollins. I, I was confused at what route they wanted to do with him. Like at first, they had him at a receiver, tight end. Now I think he's back to receiver now due to injury purposes, injury reason. But he's been uh pretty solid in the red zone uh, area. But uh, yeah, Waddle and um, Jasicki are literally the only weapons that they're they're having. Like literally, Waddle's being used mostly underneath a lot. And sometimes vertically, but basically it's like live and die for Jasicki's success. And with that being said, like I said earlier, with the play action, literally everything goes right. Like well, obviously right hand quarterback goes right, but literally it's like almost play action every other play. Like it's it's ridiculous. And everything, all plays just flows to that one side of the field. And I promise you, like from what I've seen, like from what I was watching the film on it. Brissett, he's gonna throw you one. Like he's gonna throw you a couple free ones, and it's all enough just to capitalize on it. All right, very nice. So, how do the Ravens, uh, Jake? Uh, how do they make up for the loss of Deshaun Elliott? Um, you know, we're, we're gonna see Brandon Stevens. I, I imagine Geno Stone's gonna get some play on the back end. He was on the field on the very last play of the game when the Ravens basically had ten men at the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Geno Stone was the back end safety, and I could see him playing a lot of that. So, how did the Ravens uh, make up for the loss of Deshaun Elliott, not only in this game, but moving forward? Yeah, it's going to be a committee approach, like John Harbaugh suggested. Uh, Brandon Stevens has played a number of positions this year, and um, I think he's one of the big contributors. But also, like you mentioned, Geno Stone kind of has that range, and um, he has that year under his belt uh so he understands the defense a good bit and and can move around back there and then uh on top of that you have jimmy smith i don't know so much about the anthony levine talk that harbaugh mentioned i mean he he can help out in in a dime safety role you know the dime linebacker whatever but um i i would not expect him to be playing deep very often so you know, it, it's going to be a mixture. Brandon Stevens has played well, and I think he's going to continue to grow into that role. And I really do see him in a similar physical mold to uh, Deshaun Elliott, although um, Stevens might in the long run be a little bit more of a, a true free safety than what Deshaun Elliott has been to this point. Yeah, he runs He runs a lot faster. Well, at least it seems like it is, is 40 times faster the former running back and Brandon Stevens Garnett, how, how are we making up? How are we making up for the loss Elliot here? How do you feel? Not only in this game, but moving forward, I think it's going to be done by a committee until we have a solidified answer or we feel, or I should say we, well, wink and the defense feels confident about who they can put back there. But I think, um, I think Geno Stone's going to have his opportunity at times. I definitely see Steve is going to have his opportunity at times. And uh, I know I hear we, I hear that there's a lot of talks about bringing in Trey Boston, you know, you know, on a practice squad and see if we can give him some time. But, you know, the one guy that I I want to see get an opportunity, this is – I think this is somewhat – not to get on my soapbox, but I think this is the issue that we have is, you know, we don't really give other – young guys opportunities like our Darius Washington who's known for being a ball hog coming out of a uh, TCU playing along with Trayvon Morwick so but I think just to get back on point I want to see I want to see, uh, I, I, to me, I want to see Stevens I think Stevens he's been on the field a lot I know you know so he's been in the league for an uh, extra year over Stevens or two years now yeah, two years. Um, but I would like to see Stevens get opportunity. I, I understand he made a mistake earlier, which caught, which was almost basically led, which caused that big touchdown with Jefferson had. But I think it just he just need more experience on the field. And I think he'll do pretty good at the the safety spot as the leading guy in the rotation. All right, Garnett. So Wink Martindale, how should we attack this game? We're going to play around with some new looks. 
uh, you're a no famously uh, no wink four man rush guy. Imagine that's how you're you're saying we should attack the Dolphins here. Absolutely, I'm not winking whatsoever. Like uh, we we know what's gonna happen. They're not gonna be able to run the ball. They're gonna th- they're gonna well, excuse me. They're gonna do some whack ass play action and literally is why why wink when they're going to give a right to you that's just my opinion but cuz i think like i said we're going to be able to win our one on ones this is where we should trust odafe houston jelly you know the matter book is to win their battles up front hey if we throw a, a five man blitz hey queen probably either either he gets home or he's going to force it I, I i just got faith and trust in uh the guys to get it done so no winking i i think this is a contingent wink for me <laughs> I, I had to do nice. something fun. Uh, if Tua is playing, expect a whole lot more winking. Uh, and it, and if it's not Tua, then I, I expect no wink or very little at all because Brissett has been around for a while, and I don't think he's going to be fooled by some of the the trickery that that Wink likes to employ. So. Uh, that's kind of where I am with it. I, I agree with Garnett. We should be able to lock down the run game. Play action shouldn't be super effective if they're not running su- successfully. Um, and, you know, I, I would just like to see the guys in coverage, uh, you know, lock down their, um, their respective players and helping out against Gasecki and helping out against Waddle should do the job, if you ask me. Yeah, for me on this one, Jake, I'm a, I'm a like a anti anti winking, anti winking on this one because I'm I don't see any reason why we just can't win with a vanilla defense. I don't see any reason to put anything on tape unless we want to do like old sneakeroo and put something on tape that we're never going to do again. But yeah, I'm I'm with Garnett this week, man. I just want to beat him straight up, just straight up beat him, man. It's straight. I mean, there's really no need for any tricks, no need to put anything on tape. Let's let Justin Field look, Fields look at a game where we did nothing, uh, you know, for that Bears game coming up next week. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my philosophy on this one. You know, I, I waver on some winks. This week is a no wink for me. Well, fellas, final thoughts. Here we go around the table. We'll start with Jake. Uh, just final thoughts on the game. I mean, I, I think we're all feeling pretty confident about this game, right, Jake? <laughs> yeah, I am, and I, I, hate, I hate saying that because there's been multiple games this year that – that I've been confident. Oh and, yeah. And the Ravens haven't played their best ball. So uh, let's hope that this is a party in Miami and it's a party for all the right reasons for Ravens fans. So yeah, that, that's where I am. Uh, I would love to see some first half domination like Garnett mentioned. Let's, let's blow them out um, and, and get some, some Oakley's uh, on the sideline. Nice, nice, nice. Garnett, give me some final some final thoughts. So with this being said, gentlemen, we're all in agreement of this. So this is not a statement game if we don't do what we're supposed to do. Garnett, what are you even saying over there, buddy? Oh, okay, okay, all right, okay. Come on. Uh, okay, you're okay. Me, you're trying to set me up. I see you. No, I see no, you. no, I'm just saying, man, we, we, we're all agreeing. We're all in agreement that this is, should be oh, a nasty, yeah. nasty blowout. See, look at this. Say, oh, let's go. Let's go. All right, so with that being said, yeah, I think we're going to kick ass, man. Like, kick ass, forget the names because we don't need them. We're just going to be moving on to Chicago. This is my first time ever feeling every – also confident about this. I think we're going to – communication is going to be success for defense and execution, just doing the ba- the basics is going to be the success for our offense. Just run hard at them. You know, Lamar should be – hopefully a minimum of carries for Lamar should be like at least about t- – t- oh, let's say, I'll say eight to ten carries. Anything more than that, that's just overkill. We shouldn't be – that's a problem. And then the running back should be splitting carries, at least ten carries each or somewhere around there. Hollywood's going to – I think Duvernay is going to get one. I think Bateman is going to get his first one, but I think Duvernay is going to rip one. That's what I believe. I think he's just going to catch the defense off guard and just gone. I don't know where he's going to get it. He can get it off the kick off return, but I'm hoping that probably in the slot or something. I don't know. We'll see. So, Jake, I'm chilling here. I got my got my Oakleys on, my my sure. Oakleys, fake Oakleys. You know, I'm, I'm doing the uh, – I'm doing my Lamar fourth quarter, so uh, – why don't you why, why don't you Tyler Huntley Huntley 
Tyler Huntley us out of this uh this episode here because uh I mean I'm I'm benched, bro. <laughs> oh man. Uh you guys n- know how to hit up the show. Uh check us out on Twitter. Uh Jason is at Huddle It Up Films. I am at Real Jake Vogel. And of course, the sergeant here, Garnett, is at Garnett478. Um, make sure to check that out. Also, support the troops. We got Veterans Day on Thursday. Um, you know, Garnett is is our, our guy right here. So um, we salute you for your service, sir. I forgot that all about that, too. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we have that on Thursday. And um, some some good Ravens football to look forward to earlier in the week than normal. So uh, I appreciate you guys. Um, everybody, you know, say say peace. Hey, uh, thank y'all, man, for showing support, love every week, man. Hey, hey, we do do the huddle box, so it's okay to ask questions to us. We're not gonna bite. We're probably just gonna give you a funny answer. But hey, man, we love y'all. We we all family around here. That's right. All right, fellas. Nice job, by the way. Impromptu, man. Saved by the people. Peace. See people.